In one of my past videos, I went over how to match up a player's velocity with a moving object's velocity, since Godot does not perform like that with the move and slide function by default, but I did not go over how the moving objects themselves were set up. I'll go over that in this video. I'll go over like uh, three different types of platforms because in the last video I didn't go over the code. And uh, yeah, so we got this, uh, this will be like a sideways moving platform. It'll move over here and then stop. And this one, it'll move up and down. And uh, this one will move, rotate in a circular motion like this. Here's a scene set up for the sideways moving platform. First off, it needs to be a kinematic body and we need to attach a script to the node. I'll go over the script right now. First off, let's go over our export variables. These should be just the things that the user needs to mess with to move the moving object so that the object will perform differently depending on the needs of the level. So we have our uh, time variable. This will be how long the object moves until it stops and resets. Then we have our direction variable. This will just uh, have a vector that dictates our direction. The vector is normalized and uh, we'll discuss this in a bit. But for now, it lets us know that it has a vector that gets normalized and contains which direction we move in. Okay, then we have our speed variable. So these three variables right here all go together, time, direction, and speed. So we'll move the object for however long we dictate in time and then we'll move at a certain speed going in a certain direction for that amount of time. So let's say if we have like 1.5 as we have here for a speed and we have five seconds, we move 7.5 units in a certain direction. So yeah, that's how it works. Next, we have our delay time. This is a bit more separate from the rest of the, the other three variables, but it simply dictates how long we keep the object from moving until we're ready to move again. Next up, we have a places array. This may not be completely necessary for everyone, but what I use it for is to keep track of the original position and the second position. So the first position is just our initial location, which is shown right here, the global transform.origin, and the second position is based on direction.normalized uh, times speed times time. So basically the second position you could say is where we should end up, and the first position is where we begin. And the reason I keep track of these is because Godot, like uh, when you're moving, when you're moving the location like directly, you're actually, you might cause floating point errors based on when you stop. So it may move a little tiny bit past where you want it to be. So if you snap them back into position, then it will keep those floating point errors from being a problem. I'll explain more about this when we get to the physics process function. Here we have our timers. A uh, timer corresponds to our time to move, and delay timer is our time to delay. Both timers are attached by signal to a bool variable that uh, tells us whether or not each timer is up or it's not in operation at the moment. And uh, if a bool variable is true, then the timer is not running. So that's basically what they, what both of those timers do. And what I mean by attached is that they're attached uh, whenever the timeout signal is hit then they'll turn the, one of those boolean variables to true and whenever the timer is running the boolean variable will be set to false. That's it. We have another boolean variable that is called stop and if it's set to true that means we're ready to stop on the next iteration. If it's set to false that means we're ready to move on the next iteration. That means when one of the timers go up. And uh, is moving set to true means that we're just moving our position directly and velocity is self-explanatory. In this script I've made a create timer function and we pass in a float along with a string that represents a function name. So in the function, we create a timer, set its one shot to true, set the wait time according to the float that we passed in, and then we connect its timeout signal to the function name based on the string that we passed in, which is called func target. And by the way, the float is called wait time. So that's what this function does, just creates that new timer, and then uh, we just call the uh, that function, and then we pass it in to timer and delay timer. So it gives them the result of all that. So you have all your set, both of your timers set up. Uh, after that, make sure to set their associated bool variables, time up and delay up to true. Don't forget to do this, because that means that they're off. So that means that both timers time is up and delays time is up. So yeah, so it just means that they're just not running at the moment. 
Also add both of the timers as children. Don't forget to do that. And these functions right here turn the uh, boolean variables to true whenever the timeout signal is hit. Then uh, give velocity the normalized direction times speed. So we'll have a constant velocity throughout this entire script and like unless we're stopped we just the only thing we want to do to that velocity after that is just multiply it by negative one which would just flip its direction. So now we're on to the physics process function which is like the meat and potatoes of all this. Okay so you have your first if statement. So uh, what this is saying so remember these time up and delay up variables correspond to our timers up here. So when uh, time up is true, then that timer is up. That means it's not running. And when this delay up is true, then that means the delay timer is not running. So when both of those timers are not running, that's the only time when we're gonna go into these if statements. So that's how you wanna uh, set these up. The reason is, is because you only want uh, these if statements to run once. So the only time they'll run once is when one of the timers is up, basically, when the, one of the timers is not running. So start one of them, and then it'll just start going again. Okay. Our stop boolean variable will decide whether or not the first if statement runs, or the else if statement runs. So when stop is false, that means we're ready to start moving again. When stop is true, that means we're ready to stop moving. So we're thinking in opposites. And uh, into the first if statement, when we're ready to go, we'll start our timer, and this will run for the amount of time specified by the export variable called time that we went over at the beginning of the script. While it's running, our time up boolean variable will be set to false, and this means that the timer is running, and when the timeout signal is hit, then it will set that variable to true so that we can run through these if statements again. And we'll set stop to true that so that we run through the else if statement next. So that means we'll be ready to stop. And we're going to set a boolean variable that we have called is moving to true. Then we'll multiply velocity by negative one so that we can flip every time we're ready to move. That means move in the opposite direction. Because of this, we're going to subtract our position by our direction and speed times delta instead of adding it so that the object moves in the direction we intend it to. So yeah, this is just because we're multiplying velocity by negative one. So if we added to a position, it would actually move in the opposite direction that we're intending. But yeah, this is just because of the way I set it up. It may a little weird, but you may be able to just put vo flip velocity and the else if part instead of the if part. But yeah, I just put it here this example. And the reason I did that is just because it just felt more right just to put in the if statement instead of the else if, because that's when we're moving. So when we reach the else if part, it means we're ready to stop. We want to start the delay timer, set the delay up boolean to false, and then set the stop to false. This is because when we hit these if statements again, we want to start moving again. So uh, we'll set is moving to false for now though, so that we don't move anymore until the delay timer is up. So after all that, we are going to check if we are closer to our starting location or our second location. We do this by subtracting our current position by our initial position and second position. So uh, we're giving the result of both of these subtractions to a couple of temporary variables. Note that we are taking the length of these to compute distance. We only want to compute distance, nothing else. So if we're closer to the first position, we're going to snap our object to whichever position is closer or the first position in this case, since we're closer to the first position. Otherwise, if we're closer to the second position, as said in this else statement, we'll snap to that one. But yeah. So getting all that, we're actually done with the script. Let's see how this motherfucker runs. So when you're setting up your scene, you want to make sure it's going the right direction. Right here it's not. It's going on the x-axis when it should be going on the z. But yeah, right here I'll just set it to z negative one on the, uh, on the z-axis, and bam. So now this is going too far, and that just means you want to set the time and the speed to the right values. So right here, I'm just using this type of measurement where I just like look at the numbers, but you could use a ray cast to find the distance, but right here I'm just going to do it rudimentary. So I just found that it's about 5 units away, so I'm doing 2.5 seconds times 2. And that, uh, you also have to measure by the width of this object as well if you want to get the perfect amount of distance. So I figured out that this was one unit across or one unit wide and now it's going about perfect. Let's see. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's good enough for now. Uh, you could just, you could uh, 
yeah, like I said, there's better ways to do this, but you would just need to find the right measurement so that it goes the right distance. So it depends on the speed and time as to like how far it goes, basically. Okay, so now we're on to the uh, elevator, the moving platform that goes vertically. So it's way off distance way from the origin, but that doesn't matter. Uh, we just want to set it to a kinemag body just to make sure that it's right. And then we're go just going to go in and uh, let's see. We're going to our main scene and uh, we need to save everything first. And then we're going to uh, set to the right values. So this time I'll set it to the right values right away. So I'm going to move a negative one on the y axis to make it move downwards. And right here I'm just getting that distance and getting this distance. So that is pretty much exactly two I think and I'll set it to a different delay time just so you can see one that's different and boom right here I actually got it perfect it's moving up and down and that's how you set up these scenes so now we just want to do the rotating platform okay so now to the pivot point scene we're just gonna focus on this one right here and just go straight to it so here it is in the scene and we're just gonna change its type to a kinematic body and uh, yeah, so we're not going to put the script directly on this kinematic body. What we're going to do is instead make a new 3D scene that will be a spatial. And we're going to call this mo fucking shit pivot point. So yeah, right there. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to uh, instance that uh, thing. And we'll instance the kinematic body so that it's a child of that. And basically what's going to happen is this uh, pivot point, all we're going to do is move the Z axis and have it rotate around the center of this pivot point. So we're going to attach a script to the spatial 3D, not the kinematic body. Keep that in mind. So in this script, we have our export variables. We have rotation speed, which is just simply dictating how fast we rotate. And we also have access to Z distance. This just sets the amount of distance between the object and the center of where we will be spinning around. You can also call this the radius and have it apply to the x-axis, but in this case I just called it z-distance because I wanted you to know that I'm applying it to the z-axis. So the rest of the exports just determine whether or not we delay or how long we delay. They aren't necessary, but I put them in here because maybe you need an example. So runtime dictates how long we run the movement before stopping and how long we delay. And has delay tells us whether or not we delay at all. So if has delay is false, then we won't ever delay. And if has delay is true, that means we will delay. And delay tells us whether or not we start off delayed, because it'll just constantly be toggled, which is how we delay and stop delaying. Okay. Okay, so we have velocity, which isn't really that important here. And uh, then we have child. And yeah, so basically what a child will do is we're just going to look through all the spatial's children and just look for the first kinematic body we find and just give it to that variable. So basically that child will be the one that's spinning around. So yeah, so the whole reason we're doing this is just because we need that child's transform.origin.z for the z distance. So we're going to create a new timer, set the wait time to run time, set the auto start to has delay because if we have a delay then we want the timer to auto start. And right here I'm just connecting the timer to a start delay so that way we toggle delay on or off. Alright so now we've gone to the biggest part of the code which is right here. So uh, ignore this if statement, it's not really necessary. For your code you might just want to rotate it forever. But this is just if you want to stop at certain intervals. But yeah. So right here, all we need to do to make this motherfucking shit move is just rotate the spatial around, and that's it. Basically, we just rotate it on the y-axis, so that way it spins around horizontally, and then we could just, it'll just keep spinning around indefinitely around that in this type of motion as I'm drawing out with the mouse. So yeah, it's pretty motherfucking cool, right? You know what I mean? So yeah, it's very simple, and we're just don't forget that you have to times by delta. You have to times the rotation speed by delta while you're rotating, so that way we're not just like rotating it by a fixed amount. We want to rotate it by the amount of seconds since it elapsed, so that we'll have smooth movement. But yeah, so here's the scene setup. That's the script, and I think I am ready to run it right now. But first, I need to save it as a separate scene and attach it to this scene right here. So uh, let me see. I'm gonna delete this one. And then uh, bring that one in right here and move it over to this area.
So now we have an about the right position. I think I might just run it right now to see what it looks like. Okay, so let's look at this. So it's spinning around, it's going through the place because we're moving the position directly. Remember, it goes through objects when you move positions directly, but it works. So I edited the scene a little bit and then I moved the at the arc it moves at. So yeah, now it's not moving through any objects. Look, I can just hop in here and boom, it's working like a charm. And yeah, and this one's also working just fine. But it's a little off, like I said earlier. And also we got our elevator right mo fucking here. So yeah, everything's working. That's how these scenes are set up. And I hope this mo fucking helped. Have a great mo fucking day. Bye. Peace.